the Landmark Classic team really do pride themselves on setting a, uh, a standard in the industry for excellence. Um, we believe year after year we probably are our, hardest, uh, our harshest critics to try and find new ways of doing things better. And one vendor in uh, John Breckelman really does uh, typify someone that does set uh, amazing standards with the product that he delivers here at Tamworth each year. I invite you now to sit back and actually uh, come and visit John at home in Gracemere and actually see what goes in to the uh, preparation of making this wonderful product that we have the privilege of standing over each year at Tamworth. Well, I guess this started uh, 40 years ago when I was a jackaroo on the station in the Gulf of Carpentaria and uh, everyone was going to Saxby Rodeo and I'd only just moved to that place and I didn't have a horse to ride and an Aboriginal stockman by the name of Jimmy George said, why don't you ride old duck? And I just sort of had a bit of a laugh at him because she wasn't the prettiest thing and I had never seen her do much. And, and Ray said, you have a ride on her. And the next day I rode her yarding up cattle. I nearly fell off her, she was that quick. And didn't matter where a cow went, she went rivet. I was a horse breaker, so old duck went from the Gulf of Carpentaria to Cootamundra in New South Wales, back to Cumber Chance in New South Wales, and then ended up in Roma. Doc Stuckling, uh, when I broke her in, showed a lot of spirit. I broke her in when I lived in Julia Creek and showed a lot of spirit. And I actually tried to sell her as a two-year-old through Rockhampton quarter horse sale, and I had a $2,000 reserve on, and Bidding went to $1,400 and I passed her in, which was very fortunate. Uh, took her home, trained her up for Cloncurry Challenge, and got third in the Cloncurry Challenge on her, and then won open cuttings on her, the unaffiliated open cuttings, and then just bred her as a four-year-old, basically, to Freckles Oak. And then the result was Oak's Fancy Duckling, who's right here beside me now, 26 years old. And uh, there are two of the great grandkids out of Ducks Ducks by one time royalty. Uh, just I was very lucky. Oaks Fancy Duckton was the first of her progeny, and me not knowing much, I went to Tamworth and got reserve champion of the Open Futurity on her. And I'd only ever won $10 in cutting in my life, so that was a great achievement, I thought, and she's still my favourite to this day. Now, with my horses, I suppose it's proof of the value of a good mare line. And a lot of it's just by chance, a lot of it's fluke. You could call it what you like, but it's worked out. Because uh, pretty well I haven't had a dud. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the majority of them have been very good and they've all bred on. Uh, all the mares have bred on, all the mares performed well. After six or seven rides, I generally start working them on a cow, just show them what a cow is. At that stage, they can't even stop or turn around. They might have backed a few steps, that's about it. And when we sit on them, they should be thinking about wanting to stop. And I just teach them to stop and turn around by actually working a cow. So the cow teaches them what, they want, what they're supposed to do. I think it's just it staves them souring up, they've got a job to do, and they enjoy doing it. And then in two or three rides on a cow, they'll soon, they'll soon show you that they've got natural cow sense and the desire to work a cow. With my horses, uh, I probably stretch them out a bit more as far as gallop them a bit more than most cutting horse people would. I teach them, I teach them uh, uh, speed control, which whereas I'll gallop them out and then have them slow down just listening to my seat. And I do a fair bit of that. And I think that aids me later on when I go to sell them to camp drafters because they've learnt that they, there's no point in galloping fast. And most of my colts will get galloped from a real early stage, but they will be taught that, that as soon as I sit down on them, that they should come back to me and there's no need to pull them to gallop. And I think that's a pretty important part of the training process. You know, when you sell a horse for a sale like Landmark, you have absolutely no control of who buys them. And I've been extremely lucky Although, you know, some of the people might not want a great deal. Uh, everyone, pretty well everyone that's bought a horse off me has had some success on it. And uh, that's all what it's about, because if, if your buyers are happy, 
that word gets around. If your buyers aren't happy, that word will get around even quicker still. Now, uh, before the landmark sale, uh, I, I got pretty reasonable money for my horses, but since I've been taking them landmark, I've got a lot more than I ever expected to get for my horses, and uh, it's really given me a renewed vigour and, and energy to, to work my horses and spend the time on them. Plus, it's viable for me to do it. Years ago, I used to have to rely on trying to win the cutting fatuity or something to get a name for my horses, and now I don't have to do that. I can take the pressure off them, and I can I know that if I spend the time on them, I will, will be rewarded when I put them through landmark. 67,500, quick and low. What up? Quick. Hold on. She's gone. Thank you, John. Congratulations. Benny, out she goes at 80,000. All done. 80,000 boys. Thanks, John.